Father, we're thankful for today. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. And what an honor it is to be able to come before you. What an honor it is to worship you in all ways, uh, in, in, in our, our appreciation for you in song, uh, in worshiping you with our finances, just bringing back to you being good stewards of what you've given us and bringing it back to you. And what an honor that is. And, and Father, just thank you so much for uh, the word we're going to receive. And we recognize that it's your word and help us to, to just receive from that as if you were speaking to us, your word coming alive to us. Holy Spirit, bring the revelation that we need. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for our team in the Philippines right now, and, and Lord, we're, uh, just grace, grace, grace upon them. Uh, they're serving. We pray for their protection. We pray that you give them wisdom. You deliver them from all evil intent, and Lord, you open up great doors of opportunity. I thank you that as they pray for the sick, they're healed. Father, I thank you for miracles, and, and the big thing, Lord, as they minister to others, I ask they come back changed. Uh, we appreciate that, Father. We thank you for what you're doing. We call grace upon their families as they're gone, uh, that you meet every need, and uh, we just declare that and thank you for it. Uh, Lord, uh, next week, or I believe it is, we'll be praying for Stuart, who's going on a trip, and Lord, we just pray that you even start to go now and prepare that way and open up every door and just go before him. Angels minister on his behalf. Uh, angels minister on our team's behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, I was about ready to break out in my prayer time and start just praying in the Spirit and then interpreting it, because that's what I do at home, you know, I mean, I just kind of walk back and forth and pray in the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, what am I praying about? Just show me, and I'll just like start declaring it in my understanding, and you know, you can do that at home. It's a lot of fun. If you've never had a pour over coffee, tell you what, if you like, if you like regular coffee, you will love a pour over. The problem with that is, is then you become a coffee snob like me. And, uh, but we have these in the cafe and you're more than welcome to get one after service. <laughs> ah, that is good. Okay, we're gonna, uh, we, last week, uh, because we had snow and we didn't have everybody showing up and things like this. I went off on faith and teaching out faith, preparing for what we are going into right now, which is fasting. I'm not going to do that again. We're just going to teach on fasting. Everybody's going to have to watch on Facebook. Welcome everybody watching on Facebook. All right. And it's good to see you. And uh, yeah, I can see you. You know, new technology. You thought that camera was one way, didn't you? No, you're on the screen right now. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Somebody just ran out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Martha, he can see me. All right. <laughs> Told you that was, a, anyway, never mind. <laughs> Not going to go off on that. Um, something interesting, um, uh, Jim came up to me and says, Pastor, this is just something that I'm seeing. And, and it was really kind of an interesting picture, but I think it, it really depicts something that we hit on last week, something we're going to hit on today. And, uh, and it was this, and I just really appreciate this. And, and it goes something like this. I am now interpreting what Jim told me. All right, so yeah, it's kind of like the you know, telephone thing. But the message, the main point of it is, I think you will agree, we're going to hit that right on the head. And what he saw was that Jesus was at a table, and all these people are at a table, and everybody's just very solemn and just not, you know, they're just heavy. You know what I mean? And they're just really, you know, heavy. And, and, um, and then... All of a sudden, Jesus just kind of gets a little, little smile on his face, you know, kind of like Jesus would do, kind of like I'd do. It's kind of like, it's kind of a little smirk starts happening, you know, the eyes light up a little bit, you know what I mean? And Jesus smiles and everybody just breaks out. Now, I believe what the interpretation of this is this. You can be in the presence of Jesus, but if you're not looking to him and you're only looking at yourself and you're looking at how unworthy you are and you're looking at all the stuff that you're dealing with, you're not going to be happy. But if you'll look to him, you're going to start to get, you get your eyes on him and off from you. Guess what? The joy of the Lord will become your strength. Amen. And too much time, too many times we're focusing on, we're focusing on who we are rather than who he is. Do you understand? He's the one that leads you into triumph. But you know what we try to do? Lord, I'll show you. I, I just show me, I, I'll show you how dedicated I am. I'll show you how tough I am. I'm just going to plow through. I'm going to do this in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. You know what I mean? I'm just going for it, baby. You know what I mean? I'm going I'm to I'm prove how dedicated I am to him. Are you kidding me? 
You wouldn't even breathe if it wasn't for him. You know, you're, you're about as dedicated as nothing. You just responded to him. You're walking in his grace all, every day and all the time. You know what I'm saying? And, and, in, and in reality, you get to do this. Lord, I thank you that I have breath. I thank you that I have life. I thank you for these things. And with that, I dedicate myself to you. And let's go. Let's get this thing done. And you take that same resolve that's inside of you, that same desire to get something done, and you co-labor with him. Amen. The only difference is, is one, you're trying to show God. The other one is God made you this way and you're going for it. Amen. And you just do it. And you do it with him. You keep your focus on him. You keep your eyes on him. You keep your trust in him. Life will be different. Yep. Guaranteed. You want to overcome anything? Uh, you, you can't look at your weakness. You got to look at his strength. That was good preaching. Anyway, just saying. Just, just right there. It'd be like, come on. So I'm going to go to Isaiah 58. We're going we're gonna to start looking at fasting here. We looked at faith. We looked at, you know, some things. Why do I want, why do I need to fast? One, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, your flesh is crazy. Your flesh wants to do all kinds of things that aren't right. Your flesh wants to get mad. Your flesh wants, wants to lust after things. Your flesh wants to eat more than it should. Your flesh wants to sleep more than it should. Your flesh wants to do everything. Sometimes your flesh will drive you to do things. You know what I mean? Your flesh is a wild man. Your flesh will kill you. Your flesh will just do all kinds of things. You know what I mean? You got to learn what, you know, how do I learn what the difference is between the flesh and the spirit by the word of God. And when you fast, you're, you're, you, I mean, you want to know you have flesh? Decide not to eat. I guarantee you, you'll hear the voice of the flesh. You know, they're, they're, you know what? Your flesh will tell you things that are in the refrigerator you didn't even know were there. Come on, somebody. Your flesh would be speed dialing, you know, Pizza Hut to find out, you know, what they're, you know, you got special to pizza today? You know, I mean, you know, just whatever. It's crazy. All of a sudden you'll be like, you know, whatever. Your flesh is great. Okay, I was fasting the other day, you know, which means absolutely nothing. The other day to me is like it could be anything. So I was fasting the other day. And it was funny, you know, I'm fasting, I'm praying, stuff like this, and I'm out and about, you know what I mean, just like this, and I'm just talking to somebody. When I'm talking to somebody, you know, and I'm talking, and there's like, there's things to munch on, I'm throwing things in my mouth, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, I'm like this, and I just go, turn like this, and I go, I'm fasting. My flesh doesn't care if I'm fast. My flesh just wants to automatically throw things in. <laughs> it's a matter of survival. <laughs> going to starve to death, man, you know what I mean? Your brain function, it's going down, and you need some help. There's some really cool things in Isaiah 58 that are very, very, very awesome. And understand, we have a covenant that's established on better promises. So whatever happens here, we have something even better. But he was dealing here with fasting and what fasting will do for you. We, you just, 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 just listen to this. This is just amazing. Are you ready? Yeah. You were ready a half hour ago. All right. Isaiah 58, 6, it says, Is this not the fast I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens? I mean, the bonds of wickedness. Man, if you're bound by anything wicked, you know what he wants you to do? He wants you to be lost. Uh, lost. He wants you to be loosed. <laughs> you're already lost. You need Jesus. You know what I mean? To undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And can I just share this with you? You got to be prosperous to share your bread with hunger. You got to have bread. You know what I mean? He wants you to prosper. He wants you. To, and there's a whole kinds of things I'll break this down into you. Uh, to bring into your house the poor to, uh, and those who are cast out naked to cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Uh, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Come on. Your healing shall break forth speedily. Are you kidding me? And your righteousness shall go before you and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. You know, you look at this, you know what I mean? And, and, and you think, man, that's it. That's what I want. I want God to do this. I want healing in my body. I want to be set free from the things that have me bound. I want to do these things. But much like prosperity is hidden and disguised like work, sometimes your freedom is hidden and disguised as work. You know what I mean? And God says, you want this kind of victory. You want this kind of thing. Then guess what? Fasting is going to do that. You're going to have to go to a place where you start to deny yourself and look to me. It's kind of like you being at the table just going, I wish Jesus would heal me. I wish Jesus would heal me, you know, and he's at the head of the table and you're just kind of like, you know what I mean? But what he wants you to do is go, thank you for healing me. Yeah. 
He wants you to quit looking to yourself. And sometimes to do that, especially if you're in pain or whatever and things like that, sometimes it takes fasting. Sometimes it takes fasting to just uh, 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 deny the lust of the flesh. And, to, and you know what I mean? Well, how long do I fast? Man, I mean, do you think you're going to die if you have to? I don't care. You know what I mean? You just... You just get that thing under control. I remember one time fasting because I had something out of control in my life. And man, I'm just sitting here like this, you know, and I fast for one day and I fast for two days. I fast for three days, you know what I mean? And, and, and you know, and I'm just telling my flesh, you will not have your desire. We're gonna serve God. My heart's towards God. My mind's towards God. My will's towards God. My, you know what I mean? And I'm fasting and I'm praying. I'm getting this thing done. And I remember, you know, I don't know, the voice came up and, and, and inside of me, whether it was my flesh, whether who knows what it was. And I said, how long are you gonna do this. I go, uh, until I give Victor or die. Because I'm going to be dedicated to Jesus Christ. And it wasn't, I mean, I'm serious. And I think it was the devil. I think it was the devil just trying to get me off and not looking towards Jesus and just do whatever. I'm going to tell you why. After I made that decision and I made that declaration, it was interesting, the thing that broke in my life. See, how bad do you want to honor the one who, who, who loves you? How bad do you want to love him? How bad do you want to bring honor to his name? Because if your thoughts are not about, I want to bring honor to him and I want to bring glory to his name, you are living wrong. When Christianity is all about you and what he can do for you, you you're, you're in a bad place. You're in a place where it's self-serving and you become God and you become Lord. I know this is great preaching and I know that you love it, but it is truth. Now, within that is joy unspeakable and full of glory. You put your focus on him and he pours it back on you. I, it is awesome. I'm serious. You, you pour your focus and your affection and your joy and your love on him and you want to bring glory to his name. It's amazing on how he does the same thing to you. He starts pouring out in you. How would God get glory as your shepherd? Think about it. If I had a bunch of if I had a bunch of sheep come by and man and they're, and they're all, they're a stick sticking in their 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 wool fur whatever it is you know what I mean that stuff that they're covered with I mean nasty holes in them you know what I mean they're barely walking they're you know they're like sick and coughing and stuff like this you know what I mean uh, you know what I mean you 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 would look at the shepherd and go revoke his shepherd license come on somebody <laughs> amen wouldn't you. What? what reflects if a shepherd is a good shepherd or not? The sheep, yeah. right? Yeah. You know what? If you pour yourself out onto the Lord and let him shepherd you, if you put, and you put your dedication onto him, guess what? He's going to make you look good. Why? Because, because you're his sheep. That's what he said. He said, I want to pour out my goodness upon you. Amen. And then when people go, man, you're just blessed. You just got a good blessing. Yeah, I do. Because I have a good shepherd. I have a good Jesus. Amen. He makes me lie down by green pastures. How does that happen? By following his lordship. His word says this. Listen, you're bound. I'm taking you to a table right now. It's a banquet table. It's called my word. Sometimes when you're eating his word, it says fast. I'm eating the spiritual word of God. Now he's saying, I want you to deny your flesh because it's hindering you from allowing me to be a good shepherd in your life. Do you, do you see? It's not God going, I want to punish you. It's not God saying, you do this so you can earn this for yourself. What it is, is do this because this is hindering me from shepherding you. What are you going to do to earn your healing? Nothing, but you're going to fast. And it says it's going to come speedily. Why? Because I'm going to fast and I'm, and I'm going towards him. I'm going to fast and I'm going to focus on him. I'm going to fast. And by faith, I'm saying you are the good shepherd. Well, the good shepherd is going to start ministering to you because you are in the flock. See, this is the only flock that is like this, okay? You choose to be in. See, regular sheep, they're too stupid, man. They ain't got a clue on what, what to do or nothing. You know what I mean? Sometimes we're the same way, so he lays it out for us. Yeah. But, but we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, like, but, you know, shepherds, you know, they'll go buy a sheep. They'll, you know, the sheep reproduce. They increase their flock and stuff like this. This is the only flock. This is the only church. This is the only building that's being built with living stones. Come on, somebody. And the stones have to choose to be in. This is the only flock where you choose, I am a sheep. 
You set your will to be under his will, then you get to be under his shepherding, right? Yeah, come on, somebody. You know, there's people in this church today whose lives have been touched and changed because they've been hanging out here for a while. Anybody's life changed in here since you've been hanging out? Why? I'm a shepherd. Been teaching you what I see and led that the Holy Spirit's saying. There's, how many of you ever been corrected by me and it produced life? Joel, put your hand up because I'll slap you again. All right, you know what I mean? You know, I mean, come on, somebody. You know what I mean? But it was because I loved you and I wanted you to have a better life and not, not because I was sitting here like, I'm going to dominate you and I'm going to run over your life and you know what I mean? Stuff and whatever. You know, I let Bill win when we're riding motorcycles just so he feels better about himself. And Okay, I can't even catch the guy. He's way better than me. But anyway, you know, you, you know, as a shepherd, you have a job. You, 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 you have to do what is best for others. Your, your whole motive has to be what is best for the flock, whether the flock likes it or not. My dogs, they hate going to the vet, but sometimes they have to. You ever try to put a pill down a dog's throat? It's good for them. They might need it. Man, there's times, I'm serious, man. I got that. I'm shoving this thing down your throat because you keep spitting it out. So give me a cut. <laughs> good dog. All right. You know what I'm saying? And I think Jesus is that way sometimes. Come here. This is going to be good for you. <laughs> Shove that down your throat. Come on. Amen. I know if God called you here, I am the pastor and he knows that you need something I got. Amen. <laughs> Kylie and I have been through stuff and come out the other side. I know that I can say this as the Apostle Paul said, not to the degree he did, and I, I want to get there, but follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. I don't care what you're dealing with. Follow me as, you, as I follow Christ, and you're going to get victory. I, I, you know what I mean? You've been through some stuff, but so have I, and let me help you. You're in some stuff right now. Let me help you to get through that stuff. Amen? Come on. Fasting is not an option. Matthew says, when you fast, not if you fast, when you fast. Amen. This is the Lord will reward you openly. Amen. Let's look at this a little bit. Fasting, Isaiah 58. Fasting to loose the bonds of wickedness. To loose means to open wide, and a bond means to have a fetter, a chain around an ankle to restrain, or uh, uh, this wickedness is usually a moral uh, wrong or an iniquity. So you're addicted to pornography or you're, you know, whatever, whatever it is, a moral wrong, which can, can cover a vast array of things. Okay. And, but you're bound by it. You're not getting free. You know what they do to elephants when, when they're very young, they put a, a, a bracelet around their ankle and tie them to a very, like a tree or something that they cannot pull out of the ground. And this baby elephant will pull and 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 pull until in its mind it says, I cannot get away. And after it is convinced it cannot get away, you can put a little rope around its ankle with a stake that it can just walk away with and it goes, I can't get away. That's the way sexual sins are to you. That's the way any immoral ways Satan has bound you, maybe from childhood, maybe you're abused as a child, maybe you're whatever. And you know what I mean? And for years, you've been getting your needs met outside of Christ. You've been getting your needs met, met another way. And he bound you to that. And you don't ever think you'll be free. Yeah. And now it doesn't take anything, just the littlest thing. And he's just got you bound. 
You know what the Lord says? If you'll fast, that'll be broken. If you'll fast and you'll look to him, that will be broken in your life. I don't care how much you feel that you are bound by drugs, alcohol, pornography, whatever it is, whatever you're bound by, let me just share this with you. It, it is a, it's a paper fetter. It is something easily broken if you will stop looking at how much you have failed in your own life. If you will fast and you will look to him, you're gonna get free. Amen? Well, I, I just don't know, Pastor. I try, I've tried. Well, that's because you just tried. You have to have faith. See, the word try and faith don't go together. Faith says, I'm doing this because this is what God says and it will work. Faith has trust. Faith has confidence. When you say, well, I tried that and it didn't work, what you're doing is say, well, I don't know if I really believe you, Lord, but I'm gonna do this and if you come through, well, then all right. Faith says, I found my answer. I found my answer. I don't have to be bound anymore. Praise God, Isaiah 58 is my answer. I don't have to be bound anymore. I'm gonna fast, I'm gonna seek God and this thing is being broken off my life. Woo! See, this is why faith makes you happy. This is why the word of God makes you happy. You see, people of faith, when they hear about tithing, you know what they do? Oh, 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 I found a way to honor God. I found a way that God's gonna be happy. I found a way that I'm gonna be blessed. Woo! People are self-serving. They hear that and go, I can't believe that pastor wants my money. You know, I'll tell you this right now. I want more of it. I have a vision to touch the world. You know what it's gonna take? All of us working together to get it done. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm not even gonna fake it out. You know what I mean? I want it, but this is what I want. I want it in this way and this way only. You give it as worship to him and in faith to him and we'll touch the world. Amen. Why? Because then you're worshiping him and you're not putting something in, uh, self-serving, whatever. Faith, when it hears by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed, goes, what? Yeah, man, praise God, I found the answer. Doubt goes, I tried that and it didn't work. And I don't know, man, you know what I mean? I know by Jesus' stripes I'm healed, but. You see, you put but with the word of God, you become one. Don't go there. <laughs> I know it says that, but the doc wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did Dr. God say that? What'd you do? Become prophetic? You're declaring your, your, your destiny? You allowed the prophetic word of sickness to declare your destiny? Or let the prophetic word of God declare your destiny? But I'm hurting. I, I got personal testimonies. A lot of them. Should have been dead a few times. I understand. But when you get, when you get it in your head, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. With long life, I'm satisfied, and I'm going to go for it. And I don't care what happens. I'm going to be serving him, and I'm going to be going, you know what I mean? And I'm telling you what. I don't care. If I died, my lips are going to be, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed, and I'm going to live long, and I'm going to declare the works of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm going for it, and I'm going for it big guns. You know what I mean? And, I, and, and, and this is the deal. Faith declares that. You know what? And I've had to work through pain knowing that I'm healed. I've had to work through stuff knowing I'm healed. I've had to take medicine so I could stay alive, so I could like, you know, build my faith so I could be more than a conqueror in this thing. You know what I'm saying? But this is the deal. And this is how faith thinks. And this is how faith works. I trust the word of a living God. And I don't care if I understand it because I probably don't understand it to its fullness. I don't care if I, if I don't get it totally, but I tell you what, he's a good God and I'm trusting him and I'm going with it. I might, I might not do it perfectly, but I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Man, when the Lord asked me to pastor this church, man, I was like, are you kidding me? You want me to go start a church in America? You know, send me overseas, please. Americans are terrible. They're so self-centered. They don't need you. They got social security. They got everything they need. They got, they got free medical. You know, I mean, come on, somebody. Americans don't need you. It's hard, Lord. And he says, I called you in the United States of America. 
I called you to pastor in Nuevo. I said, yes, sir. By faith, we'll get it done. I don't have a clue how, but in the name of Jesus, I'm going to do it. And so by faith, not knowing what I was doing, clueless as, clueless as I'll get out, I just said yes. And a lot of times your life of faith, you think you got to have it all figured out. But you know what the life of faith is? I trust you and my answer is yes. Amen. You'll learn as you go. Amen. Mm, I don't know. This is really good. <laughs> to undo heavy burdens. Unfast and release, you know, uh, it, you know, it's like a yoke, heavy yoke on an ox, man. You know, they're, they're plowing and, you know, I mean, look it up on History Channel or something, you know what I mean? And, you know, you see, you know, all these, man, they used to plow fields with oxen and horses and stuff like this, you know. Can, can I, you know, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your care upon him for he cares for you. These he this heaviness could be like depression. Could be the word that we just, you know, heard about, you know, this morning, you know. You're, you're not having the joy of the Lord. You're feeling heaviness. You're feeling these things, whatever. You know, the problem is, is you're looking to you and you're not looking to him. My natural tendency is not to be a happy guy. My natural tendency, I lend towards depression. And, I, and, and, and right away in my walk with the Lord, I had to learn to look to him. And when I feel those things, I, I, I make myself look to him. When I feel and I try to, and you know, and I'm going, man, I just feel this way. I, I've got to go and just start worshiping him and look to him. Why? Because in myself, I'm weak, but in him, I'm strong. Amen. And inside of this, this kid that was, very, very, very depressed, suicidal, was a guy who loves life and didn't know how to live it. And then in Christ, that came out. See, these heavy burdens, I had to fast to break those things. And there's times today, I still fast for those same things. You see, you will be as bound as you choose to be. And when you first start to go towards those things, let me just share with it, like in my life, I had to read the word and say, that is my answer. Nothing in me, no energy to do it, no drive to do it, no energy in my natural being to do it. I had to choose to do the word. That's faith. And I chose to do it and put my focus on him. Sometimes you just need to walk around the house for hours and grab a scripture and go, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Not my joy, not my own strength, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. You can't stop somebody who's got the joy of the Lord. You can't, it's an impossibility. Because they have a joy that's supernatural. Man, you just lost your job. <laughs> awesome, good deal. That just means God's got a better one for me. Amen. I'm probably going to make more money, have better benefits. Glory to God. I can't wait to see what he's got. But, but we just fired you. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> I was probably not hearing God and I missed my opportunity and he doesn't want me to miss it. So he had you fire me. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, if you got fired for being a bad employee, that's a whole different story. There go. That you need a spanking. Come on. I've said it many times. I don't care what goes on in my economy. My Lord meets all my need according to his riches and glory. If he has to create an industry that's going to survive to hire me, he'll do it. You need a job? Get that kind of faith. How am I going to do it? You might have to fast and get your focus on him and off your situation. You might have to fast and get your faith off from the economy and the dismal future from our stupid politicians who keep going further into debt. Hope you're watching, <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, you're, and you're not stupid, but you're being unwise. And I think you're just bound in a system that's got you deceived, but you know, how's God going to get us out of it, man? I, you know, I mean, maybe they know something I don't know. I don't know, but you know, I don't know how you can borrow yourself into prosperity. 
I mean, like extreme debt that is like getting impossible to even pay back. It doesn't make sense. But my God will meet all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ. You might need to fast. If you have worry and that's a burden and that's heavy, and you've got to cast that care upon him, you need to fast and get your focus back on him. Anytime something takes your focus off him, fast and get your prep focus back on him. Amen? Yep. Well, what's he going to do? I don't know, man. He did some crazy stuff. He did crazy things like had food rain down called manna. He had quail fly in. He had ravens bring in food. Come on, somebody. He took a little boy's lunch and fed 5,000. Come on, man. You might be starving and go, hey, wow, look. A happy meal. And you feed 10,000 people. You know what I mean? Why can't that happen again? Only because we haven't stretched our imagination to put our faith into such things. You see what I'm saying? Is it a stretch for me? Yeah. Is it a stretch for you? Yeah. But we, gotta, we have to start pressing in with our faith. And your faith will only become strong and, 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 and produce these types of things many times because we choose to fast and deny ourselves and to seek God. You see, a strong faith and prosperity and blessings of God many times is disguised as work. <laughs> I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek him, but I'm going to get the results and prove to the world he's a good shepherd. Amen. You know how many people have been in prison for being a Christ follower who have won their oppressors to the Lord because of the goodness of God? Because they couldn't break them. They couldn't, they couldn't break them. <clears throat> Fasting to let the oppressed go free. Oppression and to go free means to crack and to crumble. I mean, he wants you so free that whatever's bound you, he crushes it. It means to be discouraged, broken, and bruised. Death. Bad things happen in life. Uh, get the help of God. Get the help you need. When you fast and pray, he'll minister to you. Amen? Amen. He wants you to be liberated. Where the Spirit is, the Lord is, there is liberty, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And you know what? If I'm not experiencing liberty, yes, in one sense, he's with me. In one sense, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So I must choose to focus on the Spirit of the Lord. And what will he do? He will bring me to liberty. He will always lead me in triumph in Christ Jesus. Come on, he'll make me the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Come on, somebody. He will do all these things no matter what the situation is. Paul and Silas are in prison, beaten. Okay, and you got to understand, under this society, when they beat you, there was nothing politically correct. There were no, no governmental boundaries on how abused you would be. Come on, somebody. In fact, the government says, beat them bad. Make sure they never do this again. These guys were abused. They needed counseling. But they didn't need counseling because they were in Christ. And while they're in that prison for doing nothing but honoring God and they're in chains because the spirit of the Lord's in them. They didn't look at their bruises. They didn't look at how unfair this was. I didn't do anything wrong. I just wanted to help people. I was just serving God and this happens. I can't believe it, God. I serve you. I'm just preaching your word. You allow this to happen? But see, that's how most Christians today would respond, wouldn't they? I could prove it to you. Is that pastor gonna take another offering? Uh, come on. That, that's a, the only beating you took was let's honor God with our finances and you're whining already? <laughs> Why am I harping on that? Because the Bible says the number one false God, the bottom line, the very first thing he tests you with is money. He says, you cannot serve God in money. And so if you have a hard time serving God with your money, guess who's not God? 
I'm telling you this because I love you. I don't want you to stand on judgment day and say, but I didn't know that. And he'll say, uh, you chose to be Lord and you didn't accept me as Lord. So go to your Lordship, which will be eternal fire. See, unless Jesus Christ is Lord, you're in trouble. And you may have to fast and pray about, is he Lord? If he asks anything, is your answer yes? And if it's not, fast and pray until you can get there. I don't know how many times I've had to get on my knees and go, not my will, but yours be done. I choose yes, but everything in me wants to say no. I choose yes, and I will battle. And there's been times where I'm, I'm, I'm battling in the spirit and praying and fasting and praying, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Why? Because I realize one day I will stand before him and I'll give an account of everything I've done and everything I've said, and I will not get away with anything because he judges the thoughts and the intents of your heart. I might fool everybody. I might fool you. There's things in my life that you guys think I'm just all, the, all everything and, and, and the best thing going. But there's things in my life that me and the Lord are working upon. And someday it'll all just be, and I realize that. And so I just go, Lord, Let's, let's go. Life is a journey. For the rest of your life, if he's Lord, he's going to be working on something. And the thing you're responsible for is the something he's got before you. That's wisdom. Foolishness would be, oh, he's working on that with you? Then I need to work on that. Oh, he's working on that with you? Oh, well, then I got to work on that too. Oh he's, oh, he's doing that in you? No, I got to work on that too. Don't do that, man. Devil will run you ragged and you'll be trying to work on things. You have no grace to get out of your life yet. Whatever he's laying before you, you hear the truth. Maybe you're not ready to honor God with the tithes, you know what I mean? But you're hearing this, right? And you know what I mean? And you're going like, boom, it's good to understand the truth and say, Lord, I understand that and I want to do that. But right now we're working on this and let's get this under control. And I'm going to win here. I understand that and I want to get there. Right now, I might not be there, but I understand I want to get there. I'm going to get there. I want that. I choose you. But right now, that's so far out of my realm right now. Let's work on this. And you work on it. You know what? He'll take it to step two. And you say, man, pastor says I need to do this or I got to do this. No, what we're doing is presenting the truth and the accuracy of the word of God. And there's many things that you just need to choose to do because that's what the word of God says. And I lay myself down and you might fail at it, but you just keep, cho you just keep choosing it. You keep doing it and you work on the thing that he's got you working on right now. And if you'll do that, then he's going to take you to the next level. And pretty soon he's going to be able to do multiple things. You know what I mean? And it's just going to increase and rapid, you know, the, it's going to just get more rapid and increase and more and more and more and more and more life. But if you start focusing on things that he's not working with you on, you're going to start to get depressed because you're going to have failure. I can't, I, can't, I can't fast and pray like pastor does. I can't do this. You know what? I can't fast and pray like some of you do, man. Some of you are just monsters. You know what I mean? Serious, serious. And if I compare myself with somebody who has an anointing to fast and pray and to do that kind of stuff, and that's what their whole life seems like, what it's all about and stuff like this, you know what I mean? I'm going to feel pretty bad. You know what I mean? I've got people that are way more generous than I am, man. They, I'm serious, man. You know what I mean? I can't, even, I, I can't give like they give. Why? Because they're called to it. The Bible talks about that gift. And I can't sit there and go, well, I want that gift. I want to give like they give. I can't. I can't. I'm not even called to make that much money. I can't do it. It's not my job. And if I look at that and I compare myself among myself, which the Bible says is unwise, I get depressed. But as the Lord's dealing with you on anything, I'm going to present the truth. And you say, yes, that's truth. My answer is yes. And Lord, you just keep leading me and guiding me. And my answer is yes. You might fail several times on the way, but my answer is Yes. What are we working on right now? Okay, we'll get this under control. Awesome. This is what I'm focusing on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're working on this. No condemnation. I understand we're going to be dealing with that, but right now it's this. Let's get this under control. I hope that makes some kind of sense. Fasting helps set others free. It says, share your bread with the hungry. 
You know, you can meet the needs of others. You can meet physical needs and you can do this. And that's good and should be done. But what's more important even than that is you give people spiritual food. You give them the word of God, which is food that will feed them forever, will change their lives. So we do both. And when I fast, I can do both more effectively. Have you ever wondered, man, you see these people asking for things on the corners, you know what I mean? Man, Lord, do, I don't know. I want to help, but I don't know if I should help. I don't know. There's sometimes you help people and it's not really helping them. But when you're spiritually aware and you're fasting, and you're praying and you want to do what's right and things like this, it's amazing. You'll be led to give to some and not to others. And you just follow that leading. There's been times where I said, man, I can do that and I want to do that. And the Lord's going back off. And I'm going, hmm? Okay, whatever. He goes, I got somebody else I want to do that. So you let them do that. And if you do it, they're not going to have the opportunity. Yes, sir. I'll back off. Sometimes it's like the Lord says, listen, I'm trying to teach them something and they need to fall. They need to fall on their face right now. Because people have kept bailing them out, but they're not getting wisdom. So they need to fall on their face and look to me and get wisdom. You let them fall. There's other people you rescue and you just came, you just help them on the journey. It's just step by step. You just help them on the journey. How do you know which one to do? Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Because you try to meet every need, you can't do it. There's more need than what you have supply. <laughs> There's more need than you have time. There's more need than you have energy. What are you responsible for? When you stand before God, you know what you're going to be responsible for? What you were asked to do and what you were called to do. That's it. You see, if I missed it by starting this church, which I did not, and I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, but if I missed it, I could build a great work and get no reward because I didn't do what God was directing me to do. And there's people because of fear don't do what God's asking them to do. Amen? But when we say yes to the Lord, we're in his will, I don't care how long, it's amazing how much joy and strength and energy there is to do the will of the Lord. You see, everybody on my team, that's your team, everybody on the staff, I believe knows beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're called here. Doing what God asked them to do. And therefore, we're having fun doing it and God is setting us up for great success. Amen? And then as all of us falling to our gift and just do what we're supposed to do, heaven will be released on earth. Amen? Amen. Yes. What if Jim would have had that little word and said, well, I don't know how this applies. I ain't going to tell him. I'm just not going to tell him. That's stupid. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I didn't sleep enough last night. I was eating too much of my barbecue and I just said, I don't know. <laughs> you know it was probably just something like that. You know what I mean? And you know, whatever. But, you know, I, and, and he, he gave me that. I go, what's the application? He goes, I don't know. I said, all right, I'll figure it out. The Lord will show me. You know what I mean? I think it fit beautifully with what we we're talking about and what we're accomplishing here today. Amen? So Jim, being willing and obedient to just kind of go, this is what I think the Lord's telling me. Boom, just kind of added to the surface. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And so God has all these things in you. There's people in this room right now. They, the Lord's saying, hey, I want you to build a relationship with this person. I want you to do this. I want you to do, boom, 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 boom. Hey, you got a word of encouragement for somebody. Give it to them. Well, I don't know. What if it's not God? Hey, the worst thing is, is you said something nice to them. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Amen? Yeah. I know I need to stop. So we'll land this plane. We're going to do an aircraft carrier landing. So hold on. Isaiah 58 will make your fast great. There's much more we'll talk about, you know, in this possibly. There's teaching we're going to go into pertaining to uh, the church. What is the church? We're going to go through the book of Acts. What did the church look like? Okay. And can I share this with you? God thinks you're more awesome than you have ever imagined. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
and what an exciting journey it will be when we just look to him and just say yes. Amen? Yeah. There's people in this room going, I don't think God can use me. You believed a lie. Because you just being here right now, just smile. Smile at somebody. God just used you. Amen? Maybe God's just going to have you do something small for somebody, but you know that could be something big in their heart and something big in their life. Amen? Amen? That's God using you. That's God building the kingdom. And when you do that, you know what you do? When God leads you to somebody and God does something like that and you just do even the smallest thing in the name of the Lord, you've done it to him. And on judgment day, he's going to go, thank you for smiling at me. Here's a reward. And you're going to go, when did I smile at you? <laughs> I don't remember smiling at you. In fact, a lot of times I was thinking, what the heck are you doing, man? <laughs> you know, I didn't get it, man. I thought I was falling on my face half the time. He's going, oh, man, I just loved your heart, man. God looks at the heart and the intents of the heart. You might look like a mess to everybody else. And your heart might be just the best thing, the greatest jewel that he has ever seen. And there's people that look like they got it all together and their heart's evil. It's all self-centered, all self-serving. It's all about what people think about me. It's called pride. So this is the deal. Let's just have both. Let's let him be a good shepherd. Let's put our heart towards him and live this really awesome life. Come on, somebody. And bring glory to his name because he's a good shepherd. Amen. And you're going to get that by fasting and seeking him in one aspect. It'll be that. Amen. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this time. And Lord, I just ask that by your spirit, you would bring some revelation and truth and understanding to everybody that heard me speak today. And I feel like I shared what you wanted me to share. And I did it in the way that you created me to do it. So I declare it as something good. I love you. I thank you for this congregation of people. And I thank you that you have a great plan for everybody in this room. I thank you that your life and your joy and your goodness is to be treasured and valued and sought after. You're the great pearl of great price. And we'll sell everything we got and find you. I believe that we're getting into those end times and that you could be coming back at any time, Lord. More evil will be released, but we're, we're greater than evil because we have light and we are light and we're salt in this earth. We're a city on a hill. We're a candle on a lampstand. So, Lord, as this world gets crazier, man, we're just going to be shining brighter and brighter and brighter. And we're just going to be so visible because we'll be a city on a hill. We can't hide, won't hide. And it doesn't matter what people think of us. We choose you. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May you be filled with his spirit and the joy of your salvation. In the name of Christ, amen.